The Mercedes-Benz C-Class has had a really breezy run. It came to us looking quite literally like a baby S-Class and unlike the CLA, offered a more authentic sedan experience. Now, to build on a formula that was already working, they've given it a facelift. So, you get a tweaked exterior, some updates on the interior and a little jiggle in the spec sheet. That's it. There's your review. See ya. Nah, there's more to it. I could say that these new bumpers make the C-Class look sportier and new, but honestly, onlookers won't be able to tell the difference. But place this car and the outgoing model side by side and you can tell that this looks a lot sharper. The major changes though are with the lights. You get this beautiful set of full LED headlights that in my opinion look better than the multi-beam LED headlights you get with the C300D. And then there are the tail lights. The C-Class already looks like the S and from the rear with these light signatures, it looks more Maybach. Inside, the updates prove to be serious experience enhancers. For one, the new steering wheel is a proper upgrade over the old one. Complete with the E-Class derived touch sensitive controls, it's not just a lot easier to use but so much nicer to look at. And I appreciate tech like this because it adds a dose of convenience without creating a needless complication. And at the same time, you've got simple touches like the motorized rear sun blind. Yes, technically the C-Class only becomes a chauffeur-driven pick in markets like India and China, but it's nice to see things like this being considered. Also, Mercedes-Benz has dropped that old glossy finish trim on the inside, which was a bit of a fly in the ointment in an otherwise classy interior and replaced it with this non-lacquered wooden finish. And that old-school charm is just delivered in spades. No doubt, it's also down to this analog clock. And speaking of which, there's a little party trick. If I go into the time settings, shift over to, I don't know, 2.25 p.m., check this out. They've managed to create drama with this and I cannot stop playing with it. The cherry on top is this bigger infotainment screen that's available with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But this isn't a touchscreen which does cut into the functionality of these two features. Two misses here though. One is the fully digital instrument cluster that is offered overseas but not here. Maybe that's being saved for later as an update but it still doesn't make any sense to me. And two, at the rear, the old one had a two-pin plug you could use to charge your laptop, get some work done. Why remove that? So remember that little jiggle in the spec sheet that I mentioned? Well, it's a little bit more than that. So the C220D and the 300D get the same 2-litre, 4-cylinder diesel engine that we've already seen in the E-Class, the long wheelbase. But here, it's BS6 compliant. The difference between the two variants is the power output. So this one, it makes about 194 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque, while in the 300D, it makes 245 horsepower and 500 Nm of torque. So how's this one to drive? I'll put it simply, it's more or less standard fare. And I mean that in a good way because you don't need anything more than the slightest and gentlest of taps on the throttle to make quick progress in the city. And if anyone ever feels like this is a boring, played safe luxury sedan that can't do quick, you just need to poke the throttle ever so slightly to prove them wrong. You don't have to stomp it. It's also a very efficient engine in the real world and refinement levels are noticeably better than they were in the old 2.1. Even the 9-speed automatic transmission offers really nice and smooth gear changes while driving regularly. And it's not lazy, even if you put it in comfort mode. It's not a particularly exciting car to drive, nor does it have, well, precision cut dynamics. There is some body roll when you go into corners, the steering, it feels a bit slow. And the 9-speed automatic transmission, it's not BMW ZF quick. So if you go for like hard overtakes when you stomp on the throttle, it does take about a second to realize what's happening before figuring out what it's supposed to downshift to. So is the C220D a fun to drive car? Sure, but is it an out and out enthusiast pleaser? Not really. For that, you're probably better off getting the Jaguar XF, the Bimmer 3 or even the C-Class 300D. The ride quality, if I had to describe it in one word, I'd say it's familiar. It's good, it's comfortable and it rides quite flat over good roads. And even if you come across some undulation, it settles very quickly. You don't have a lot of that rebound or bounciness. But at the same time, the need for that 
settling to happen also arises because much like it was with the previous C class it picks up on these minor undulations on the road and you can constantly feel some amount of lateral shimming and some side to side movement the suspension will take minor potholes and undulations without really losing composure and unless it's like a really bad pothole or rough patch you're not going to feel a jolt inside the cabin but you still have that familiar thud that you hear it even happens when you go over speed breakers a little too quickly so the suspension over bad roads you do hear the undulations and bad patches more than you feel them but in this department i'd have to give the audi a4 an edge and when it comes to the suspension setup and ride comfort none of the offerings from the german titan 3 can hold a stone to the volkswagen passat the changes on the new c class may not seem all that significant but they are it now looks classier on the inside and out gets new tech that is still as usable as ever and the quality of everything just makes it feel so much richer than its rivals in the segment it just has a charm that nothing else does So yes even though it has some cons like the ride quality which could have been a little bit better and some feature concessions versus the international model it is still a sweeter deal